pray. Father, I need you, Lord. I, I don't have any wisdom. I don't have any words of knowledge. I don't have anything apart from you. God, I can't even do anything unless your Holy Spirit move. No lives will be changed unless you come and fill this place. God, I ask, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would anoint your servant, God. All I am is clay. I pray that you would mold me right now in this moment. God, that you would speak through these lips, God, Lord. God, I pray that you take a coal off your altar and anoint me, Father. God, for whatever you want to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And when you're done, Lord, sit me aside in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Uh, it's 11, uh, 11.30. Dad said, I've got you to about 3.30. So, we're... we're <laughs> and you thought he was a long preacher. <laughs> turn with me, if you will. Um, turn with me, uh, if you will, in your Bibles uh, to uh, Psalms chapter 1. I'm going to jump around a little bit this morning. I, uh, I don't necessarily have one set thing to preach. Sometimes... The Lord lets you in on one thing you're supposed to preach on, and you just stick to that. Um, I feel like the Lord wants me to jump around a little bit today, so we're going to do that. Um, maybe the Lord, hopefully the Lord will piece things together uh, towards the end. We'll see what happens with it. Uh, but Psalms chapter 1, I want to point something out. I feel like the Lord wanted me to just share uh, maybe briefly on this really quick, and then, I'll, and then I'll go into what I feel like the Lord's telling me to go into here. Um, we all know the, the Scripture uh, how many want to be blessed? Yes. About 15 of you really want to be blessed. Uh, how many want to be blessed? Amen. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Psalms chapter 1 verse 1. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Look at the progression here. Go from walking... To now you're standing and now you're sitting. This is what sin does. First you walk around it and then you begin to stand around it. And you get comfortable enough to sit where sin is. But God says blessed are you if you do not walk in the council. He doesn't want you walking anywhere around it. But you find yourself if you begin to walk around something long enough. You, you, you become familiar with it so you begin to stand next to it. And when you begin to stand next to it then you just get a little bit more comfortable. Then you begin to sit next to it. Next thing you know the thing that you you thought had the, that you you thought you had whipped has you whipped because you're sitting down sitting in the seat of the scornful here and, and but I'm not talking about that next verse but his delight is in the law everybody say the law, the law. of the Lord yeah. and in that law doth he meditate day and everybody say day and night yeah. how do you want to pray you want to be blessed you want to prosper meditate in the law of the Lord day and night what's going to happen to him right here next verse and he shall be like a tree planted by rivers of water that bringeth forth fruit in his season. That translation is wrong. It should not say in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. How can you say that's a wrong translation? I could say that's a wrong translation because the next part says, His leaf shall not wither. His leaf shall not wither. So if your leaf isn't withering, then you're constantly producing fruit. I want to talk to the Christians today that, that, that say to themselves, I'm going through a winter season. I don't have to produce anything right now. His leaf shall not wither. No, let me tell you something. If your leaf is withering, then you are constantly getting fed. My question is, what are you getting fed by? If your leaf isn't withering, whatsoever he do shall prosper. What? Uh, well, I'm going to produce, uh, you know, it's my season, it's my winter season, so I really, it's, it's hard for me to read my, read my words, hard for me to pray, hard for me to seek God. It's, it's, well, you know, you know, brother, uh, winter season is when your roots go deep in the Word. And, and uh, okay, I, I want to see what, what are you producing? What are the fruit, what's the fruit you are producing? What, what, what are we producing? His leaf shall not wither. And whatever he, whatever he does will prosper. The next verse, the ungodly are not so, but like the chaff. Everybody know what chaff is? What's chaff? Excess. Throw it up in the air and the wind takes it away. Chaff which the winds drive, driveth away. Next verse. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Next verse. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish. 
just, I'm not even really supposed to, I just felt like the Lord wanted me to touch on this this morning. I'm going into something else. But I want to talk to some, maybe the Lord wants me to talk to somebody about this right now. Don't use your winter season as an excuse to not produce. I'm in the winter. Yeah, well, everybody goes through winter. You can't use that as an excuse not to produce. As a matter of fact, you're not really called, you're not really called to produce fruit. You're called to bear it. You can't produce it. Jesus said, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you're in me, what does that mean? Jesus said, the nutrients come from me. You just got to get in me. Only thing I need you to do is, is, is to have your branches strong enough to bear what I'm going to produce in you. I just need you strong enough to bear while he's trimming me. He's trimming you so he can get you stronger. Why? Because you can't bear what he's getting ready to produce in you, so he's got to cut you back. He's got to cut us back every once in a while because he wants to bear so He wants you to bear something. The problem is, is we want to bear something we're not ready to bear. We want people to come uh, eat off of our tree. Eat off of our tree. The problem is, is, is before they can eat off our tree, the fruit falls because we can't bear it. We can't bear it. So maybe this is a word, just a small word for somebody in here this morning. Maybe God is trying to tell you to, to stop using winter season as an excuse and get into your word and produce and bear fruit in your winter season. Listen, when no one else, when no one else's leaves in the winter time, you see there's no leaves on the tree. There's no leaves on the tree. Everything's dead. But listen, when everybody else around you is dead, when everything is dead, you should be producing and bearing something. Jesus said, you'll know them by their fruits. What are you bearing? Anyways, I wasn't even really going to go into that this morning. I feel like the Lord wanted me to touch on. Maybe it's for somebody. What are you producing? What are you producing in the winter season? Is it murmuring and complaining? What are you producing in the, in the, in the, we've had a lot of uh, great moves of God. Me and Ellen have seen, uh, we were in a church in Arkansas and we saw the Shekinah cloud of the Lord coming to the church. And I was standing at the back. And you couldn't see, you could barely see the platform. And I said, well, maybe, I said, maybe somebody's doing, there's some dust in there or something like that. No, it was a literally Shekinah glory. We were in a revival for about three days and the pastor had to extend it because no one wanted to leave the church. And maybe of a church of about 100 people, 300 people were jam packed into the church every single night. And the Lord moved. We saw signs and wanted to saw a, a girl that never could walk. Uh, she, uh, am I telling this right? She never could walk in the middle of the service, begin to get up and walk in the middle of the service. I've seen, we've seen great moves of God, and, and I can tell you about great moves of God, and I could, I could, I could bore your ears off or, or encourage you one way or another about great moves of God, but I, I don't want to get caught up into the, the, into the season of fruit that was bared last season or the season before. God is doing something new, and I want to get caught up in what He's doing right now in this moment. Amen? Amen. Um, Turn with me in your word, and I think I'm going to stick with this one here. I feel like this is where we're going to go. Turn with me in your word, the New Testament. Actually, no. Go to the Old Testament. Go to Kings. Oh, now I've got three hours and ten minutes. If you've made reservations, cancel them. No, I'm joking. <laughs> Second Kings. I think it's Second Kings. If I can find it myself. Bear with me. I'm just looking through my stuff. Here it is. Thank you, Lord. Second Kings chapter 4. Um. Again, I want to say happy Mother's uh, Day to all of the mothers. Mother, I love you. Uh, I want to say personally, for me and Ellen, happy Mother's Day to you. Um, I know this is a Mother's Day. Uh, uh, again, I, I didn't feel like the Lord wanted me to preach. Uh, maybe the Lord will tie something in later, but I feel like that's why Dad had that covered. Thank you, Lord, for that. Thank you, Lord, for talking to Dad this morning about mothers. Yeah. Appreciate it. You helped me out a lot. Second Kings chapter 4. I want to talk um, very briefly, Lord willing, uh, about um, 
about a resting place, about a resting place. Um, so we're going to start reading in 2 Kings chapter 4, uh, verse 8. When you're there, uh, it's up there. If you don't have your word, we can just do that. Uh, <clears throat> verse 8. Now it happened, or and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem. Everyone say Shunem. 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 Where there was a great woman. Everybody say great woman. Great woman. It was a great woman. And she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in thither to eat bread. How many like bread? I'm a carb guy. Ellen's got to constantly, hey, you're eating way too much bread. You need too much carbs because it all turns to sugar. She turned in thither to eat bread. Next verse. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God. Why didn't her husband perceive this? I don't know. Which passes by us continually. I, I will say this. I will touch. I know it's Mother's Day. I will touch on this. Women have a certain sensitivity to the Lord that men don't. I will say that. They have a certain sensitivity. They know when something spiritual has happened. Um, uh, all right, I am going to go into that. Thank you, Lord. So, so God's good. So, in, the, in Genesis, it says that uh, he created uh, man and woman. Uh, but, but if you look up uh, when it said uh, he created man and woman, there's a term there. It's called easier. Easier. He created woman for it to be easier. Easer. It's called easer. Easer in the, in the Hebrew. But let me tell you what easer means. It means a second pair of eyes. Don't you though, I'm the man and I can I see everything. No, you don't. I see behind me on the left and on the right. No, you don't. No, you don't. Watch when your wife puts a bug in your ear and says, be careful for that. Well, check that out. Look, did you see that? And you don't see nothing as a man. Everything's humpty-dory. No, you don't see nothing. But this woman here perceived that this was a holy man. Now, now, who are we talking about here? Who was the holy man? Uh, let's see. Uh, his name was Elisha. Everybody know who Elisha was? Lift your hand if you know who Elisha was. Elisha was the after runner, or if I say this right, predecessor, is that right? The one that comes after. Uh, Elijah, everybody know who Elijah was? God's man of power for the hour, Elijah. He was the, one of the greatest prophets that we, that we know of in the Bible. Um, it came to, I'm just going to give a little backstory. I, Elijah was walking and he would tell Elisha, he was getting ready for Elijah's time to, to, to come, uh, to be taken away in a whirlwind. And he stops at the Jordan, he stops at, uh, at all these different places. And he says, all right, Elisha, you stay, stay here. And Elisha says, no, as the Lord liveth, I, I'm not going to leave you. So he walks on. So this, and now we're talking about Elisha. So anyways, it, it happens that there's 50 sons of the prophets that's on the hill that's supposed to see in the supernatural, but they can't get close enough to see in the supernatural. They're more content hanging back, uh, seeing the whirlwind than they are actually seeing what actually happened. So there, there's 50 sons of the prophet. Well, I'm a prophet. All right, well, make sure you're close enough to see what's going on. That's right. That's right. That's right. Well, I can judge it. Yeah, but you're 50 miles away. You need to get a little closer. Yeah. Why? Why can you say that? Because when Elijah, when Elijah got taken up, they said, where'd he go? Hey, okay, man, Elisha on the road. Hey, where, hey, where's your servant? Maybe he's over on one of those mountains over there. Fifty sons of the prophets. Then what happens? There's a, a whirlwind that happens. There's a chariot. Uh, Elisha calls out, my father, my father, chariot of the Lord. And the horseman thereof, his jacket gets thrown overboard. Now there's a double portion. It's funny, you can't get a double portion. I can't give you something double of what I'm not. So when Elijah, I believe when he got into the chariot, he got a double portion. He threw it over. Because I can't get you double of what I'm not. And he said, well, well what do you want? What, I, I want a double. I want a double portion of what you've got. You've asked a real hard thing. But if you see me, you get it. If you see me, you get it. Not if you hear it. 
But if you see me talking about spiritual vision, if you see me, you'll get it. So here we have e e e Elisha now puts the jacket on. He walks over to the Jordan and he takes it off. And he, where's the Lord God of Elijah? Smites it. Rivers part. So this is the guy we're talking about now. We're not talking about single. We're talking about double. Okay, this is the, this is the man. Now this woman perceives that this... <laughs> is a man of God. I guess you would perceive he is a man of God. He's walking in double of what Elijah had. Next verse. She talks to her husband, let us make a little chamber, I pray, for thee on the wall, and let us set for him there a bed, a table, and a stool, and a candlestick, and it shall be, whenever he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. Now, Elisha would pass by Shunem very often. One time in particular, this is the story we're talking about, Elisha would pass by and this woman would say, hey, would you come and eat? Uh, similar to uh, me and Ellen, get on the, we are on the road a lot. I've got so many miles on my car, it's not even funny. So, but when I'm passing through Maryland, I, I have a friend. His name's Richard. I call Richard up. Hey, what, what are you doing, Richard? Nothing. What are you doing? I'm passing through Maryland. You want to get some food? All right, yeah, let's stop and get some food. Okay. Be no different if you had family in Fredericksburg or if you had family in wherever you have family and you're driving by and you're passing through, you call them up and they say, well, you want to get some food? I mean, you guys all said you like to eat. I mean, who would turn that down? Want to get some food? I'm not an, I, I used to be an IHOP guy. I'm an IHOP guy. I'm not really an IHOP guy anymore. I, uh, sometimes I enjoy Cracker Barrel. It's good. Um, but you know, eating is very spiritual. Eating is, actually, eating is actually tied to your vision. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You'll never have any spiritual vision until you actually taste of Him. When you taste of it, you see Adam and Eve, they took it, and their eyes were what? Their eyes were opened. What are you eating of? That's another deal. Because whatever you eat of, your eyes will be open to that thing. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall. Let us set for him there a bed, a table, a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be whenever he comes to us, he shall turn. So now Elisha isn't just, bear with me because I'm, I'm going as fast as I can. Elisha is not just now passing by and turning in to eat. Now she's, now this woman has told her husband, has conned her husband. Hey, listen. <laughs> Hey, what do you think about making another or another bedroom, you know? What do you think about a spare room? Maybe we can kick, you know? Well, it said that she made another room on the wall. It's funny if you look on, on the wall. It was actually the highest place in the, in the house. It was on the wall. There was a wall that people would go up to and they would look over. You could look over, if you study it, you could actually look over to the other walls, the other roofs that were around you. And, and you could actually see what was going on on that roof and on this roof. But she said, let's make him a room on the wall at the highest point. So... Elisha now is not just coming. See, look, if you come over, if I invite you over to my house to eat, it's really not a hard thing for me to hide the trash. It's not, it's not a difficult thing for me to, if I said, hey, Edwin, I want you to come over and eat at my house. If I had clothes laying out or anything, guess what I would do with them? I'd just throw them underneath the bed. I'll just shove them under. I'll just, she wouldn't let me do it. She would like fold them. You know, she's, she's clean. But listen, Throw them underneath the bed. I mean, I'm like this. Just throw them, throw them in the closet. But see, it's, it's really not that hard. It's not that hard to get rid of trash when someone's just coming to visit you. But now she takes it a step further. She says, we, we want to build this chamber so that way he, he doesn't just come and stay and leave, but he comes and stays and stays with us. See, a lot of us are happy with dining with the Lord on Sunday, but we kick him out on Monday. Elisha in the Bible, if you look up Elisha, let's, let's change Elisha's name. Uh, what, what was prophets, what were prophets used for? They spoke the what? The word of the Lord. So let's change Elisha's name in the story to the word of the Lord. So now she says, I don't just want the word of the Lord to come and eat with me but I want the word of the Lord to come and dwell with me 
So I want the word of the Lord to not only come in here and dine with me and speak to me and tell me secrets, but now I have to make a place for the word of the Lord to live. I have to make a place for the Word of God to live in my life. And there's Christians that are content with talking to the Lord and having the Word of the Lord every once in a while. But you got to bust down some walls to actually let Him live in you. you got to actually bust down some things in your life to have the Word of the Lord actually dwell in you. Why, how do you, why you got to bust things down? Well, because they had to make a room. This is not an overnight project. I've made rooms before. He's made me made rooms for, before. In the middle of the night, 2 o'clock in the morning. Oh, let's make this room, son. See these rooms on the side here? We built them. And we all built them. All my brothers know we built them. We'll make a room over there. We're gonna, and what we're going to do, son, is we're going we're gonna to level it this way. And we're going to do this. And we're going to do that. And then when we, listen, don't get 16-inch. Uh, uh, beam. We, we want to run them 24 so we're not using as much wood. You know, Whatever. I've made rooms before. I, I know what it is to make a room. I know what it is to sand and sheetrock. You get messy. It's, it's ugly. Trust me. You, she doesn't want to hug me after I, get, I got sheetrock all over me. Why? It's messy. It's dirty. It's a project. It's not easy. It's not simple. It doesn't happen overnight. It's not something that's going to change in your house overnight. It's not something that's going to happen on a whim. It's when you begin to make steps and say, God, I'm going to bust out that wall for you and that wall. Oh, yeah, but, but not every wall. But, 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 but here's the thing. It's not the walls that you choose to bust out. It's not, those, it's not just the walls that you choose to bust out. You see, they made the prophet a very... Uh, a, a very strategic room. It was at the highest place on their house. So now it says that, that they would put in this room a bed, a table, and a stool, a candlestick, a bed, a place to rest. They would put a table in there. Maybe when the prophet got hungry, maybe he'd, he'd come and sit down at the table, maybe to have some food for him. A stool. That stool is mistranslated, should not be translated stool. If you go look it up, please don't ever take a preacher's word for it. Go look it up for yourself. Because there's a lot of people that lie to you just to get a, a certain point across and to take things out of context. Look it up for yourself. A stool is actually translated a throne. A stool, a candlestick, and it shall be when he comes to us, he shall turn in here. I'm going to rest here. i rest here for just one, one minute here because I, I, I have had the Holy Spirit come upon me. You've had the Holy Spirit come upon you. And in the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit would come upon someone. It would come upon David, but the Holy Spirit would lift. It's the same story. The Holy Spirit would come, the word of the Lord would come, and they wanted to eat with the word of the Lord. They wanted to eat with the prophet. They wanted to get refreshed. They wanted to refresh him, and then the prophet would leave. But now they say, I want to build a room on the highest point. My, my, my question to you is, 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 if you have built a room for the presence of God, where did you build it? Is it in the basement? Did you kick out a wall that you really weren't, it was all good? But you, you see, when you, build a, when you build a room at the top point of your house, all the other houses can see exactly what that room is for. That's right. And they saw here a prophet. They built the, 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 the room for a prophet. And in the room they put a stool, translated a throne. Whatever is at the highest point of your life is what you will serve. Amen. Whatever is at the highest point in your life is what you will serve. Whatever is seated on your throne is what you will serve. How can you say that? Because it said that when he would sit, that the woman would come and bring him food. And she would ask him, what would you like to eat? What would you do? She served whatever was on your throne. I want to ask you, just not, but not for you to raise your hand or anything like that. What are you serving? What's on your throne? Is he your Lord and Savior? Or is he just your Savior? In the book of John, it says grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So I, in order for me to get truth, I have to know that everything comes through Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. But it, it said grace and truth will come through Jesus Christ. There's a false grace being preached throughout the world today. I've been all, I've been all over the country. I, I, listen, I, I'm not saying to boast or brag or anything like that. But there is a different Jesus being preached. 
There is a Jesus. You don't have to change anything about yourself. He loves you just the way you are. And when you come to him, you can just stay the same way. That's not grace. That's not grace. See, he loves you enough to pick you up from where you are, to set you on a rock. David said like this. He said, I was in the miry clay, and he reached down. He set my feet upon. He didn't set him up to, to dust him off, to put him back in the miry clay. He set him up on a rock. He set him up and picked him up and put him back on a rock. Well, this is what we see here. I want to talk about resting place. This is what we're talking about, making a place for the Word of God to rest in your life. Built the, the room on the highest point. And it says that the prophet would come in and lay down there and he would rest. He would rest. He'd get up. He'd maybe eat some food and he would rest. He would rest. Grace and truth comes through Jesus, comes through the word of the Lord. Grace and truth. If you ever want to know if something's biblical or not, just look it up. Someone's preaching to you. Someone's talking to you and it doesn't line up with the word. Listen, you don't have to spit the whole thing out, but... If you eat a steak, you really don't want to eat the bone. So take the meat off of it and spit the bone out. You don't have to take everything. You don't have to take it all. And just because someone says one thing out of line does not mean they're not a man or woman of God. So this is what we see here. Grace and truth comes through Jesus Christ. What does that mean? Everybody know how to make coffee? Well, now we have Keurigs. We really don't have to do much. We just push a button. But, yeah, there you go. But mom would make coffee. And I'm a big coffee guy. I like coffee. But mom would make coffee. When mom made coffee, she'd put a filter in. And then what, how, how, how does that process work? You put the coffee in the filter and then the water drains through, right? The filter, right? Correct? Okay, so the water. So I uh, just go with me for one second. Grace and truth came through Jesus. Not around Jesus. came through Jesus. Now who's Jesus? He's my Lord, my Savior, healer, redeemer, cleanser. He's not just my Savior. He didn't just save me. But he's my Lord. What does Lordship mean? It's a term we all hate. Lordship. Here's what Lordship means. Nothing belongs to you. Your life is not yours. Just opening up any eyes in here. You see, that, that car is not even yours. The money that I put into your pocket is not even yours. It's lordship. You're just the steward of what he's given you. Lordship. Lordship. And then when he, can, when he feels like he can give you more, he trusts you with more. And he gives you more. And he gives you more. And he gives you favor. But see, grace and truth, and, and, and this is what I wanted to point out because I want you to listen closely. There's people preaching a false grace and it's sending people to hell. Sending people to hell. Millions to hell. Millions. Grace and truth. John chapter 2. Grace and truth comes through or came through Jesus. He's not only my Savior, but he's my Lord. My, my Lordship, everything belongs. So, so, so if I say that I have grace and I only declare Jesus as my Savior, I have no grace. Because he's not just my Savior. But he's also my Lord. So if it came through the Lord Jesus, then he's my filter. So if you're not allowing him, it, listen, it doesn't happen overnight. But if you're not allowing him to be Lord over you, then you have no grace. Well, there's an area I stumble and fall. And okay, when you stumble and fall, repent. He's faithful and just to forgive you. Make him Lord again. If you stumble again, make him Lord again. That's how you receive grace. And grace is not a license to sin. Uh, he said, God forbid. Paul said, God forbid. No, it's not a license. But what it is, it's, it's an empowerment. So that way you don't have to keep doing that thing. That you can get out of the miry clay. And be, you can be set upon Jesus. The rock. Amen. Back to a resting place. So we're going back. So let us make a small chamber. We, we, we read all this. I want you now. I, I, I want to touch on this, and I, I'm going to be, I'm trying as fast as I can, but this is inside of me, man. This is good. This is inside of me. Give me about three more hours, guys. This is inside of me. So, 
So a resting place. So in the Old Testament, it said that the Holy Spirit would come upon people and then the Holy Spirit would lift off of people. The Holy Spirit, Samson, this is what Samson would do. Shake himself. The Holy Spirit would come upon him. Right? And then he took on Philistines, right? He was not just natural, but he was super. Supernatural. The supernatural. See, oh God, I wish I could get the church to understand this. See, you operating in the supernatural, it's not hard. It's really not hard. It's when God takes your natural and makes it super. It's not, it's not difficult. It's when you get on your knees and say, God, use me today. And you just end up saying, hey, God bless you today. It's when God took your little natural, God bless you today, and touched someone's heart and made it super. It's supernatural. Supernatural. It's, it's not a mystical thing. It's not something that, that only pastors or preachers can operate in. Let me tell you, actually, God requires his body to operate in it. He requires his church to operate in it. He requires that you want to see revival, then start operating in the supernatural. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. So we see that now Holy Spirit would come and lift off. But now, see, we're not under that covenant. We're under a new covenant. Oh, boy. Wow, this is just so much. We're not, so now we're not under that. So now let's, let's go with me. Don't even go with me a word. Just, just listen to this. In the book of John, it says that Jesus comes and Jesus comes to uh, the Jordan. Uh, John is preaching, uh, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's funny, he didn't say repent you sinners. He was saying repent for the kingdom. He was saying repent actually metanoia literally means to turn or to, to change the way that you think. He wasn't saying repent you sinners. He was saying repent, change the way that you think you Pharisees because you're going to miss Jesus. Because you can turn the, oh we repent, we got to turn around and walk the other way. You can turn around and walk the other direction all you want to. But until your mindset changes, you're going to continue to do what you've always done. So God is saying now, he, he wants to give us a new mindset. And this is what, this is what the word, the, the, the word says. It says that Jesus goes and John says, hey there's the one whose shoe latch that I'm not able to loose. And the whole nine yards, Jesus comes walking up and behold the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. Jesus goes down into the water. Comes up out of the water, and what happens? We see the Holy Spirit. We see the Trinity right there in that moment. See the Trinity. We see the heavens open up. The Father is speaking. We see the Holy Spirit coming down. And it says that the Holy Spirit came down like a, like a dove. And Jesus is being baptized. Holy Spirit comes down like a dove. A ah, dove. A dove is very gentle. I've scared doves away really a lot. I have. I was working on a job the other day. And uh, there was a dove. And I barely moved a step towards him. And he just flew away. But in this instance. It says that the Holy Spirit descends upon Jesus as a dove. That's funny. Because why did he ascend, descend upon Jesus like a dove? But when the 120 were in the other room, upper room, he descended upon the, upper, uh, the, the 120 that were in the upper room uh, uh, like flames of fire. So he descends upon Jesus like a dove. But then when the 120 are in the upper room, he comes with a mighty rushing wind and they sit on them cloven tongues of fire. Why did the Holy Spirit rest upon Jesus like a dove and come upon the disciples like cloven tongues of fire? It's because there was nothing in Jesus that needed to be purified. There was nothing in Jesus that needed to be purified. The disciples, the fire, oh what is a fire? Fire looks, fire, uh, it, 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 you, you take gold, you want to purify gold, you heat it up. Silver, you heat it up, heat it up. All the dross comes to the top, so take, scrape the dross off the top. Well, there was nothing in Jesus that needed to be purified, but this is what I love about this story because I'm talking about making a resting place for the Word of God or a resting place for God in your life. This is what I love about this story because John is the only gospel that says this. It says the Spirit descends like a dove and two little words and remained. 
See, I, it's fine and dandy to have the Holy Ghost come upon you, but I want to see it remain. He came upon me at church, that's fine. But Monday when you're working, did he remain on you? Did he remain on me? Did the fruits show that he remained on me? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, self-control. Did, did the fruits show that he's remained on my life? Amen. The Holy Spirit, has he remained on my... Oh, I, I'm going to take it a little bit of a step further because now I was talking about building a resting place for the Lord and we were talking about a house, but now it says in the New Testament that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So now your body is, a, I'm not just talking about, a, God said, it's not just a house made by man's hands, but now it's your body. Your body's now the temple of the Holy Spirit. Right. He wants to, are you catching this? He wants to rest on you and in you. Right. He doesn't want to leave. That's why he was sent here. It's expedient for me that I go. Why? Because when I go, I'm going to send somebody that you need more than me. I can't be everywhere at one time, but he can. Amen. What do you mean Jesus couldn't be there? He wasn't crucified yet. He got his glorified body. He could do whatever he wants to do. He could walk through walls. And it's good for me that I go. Why? Because I'm going to send somebody that's going to lead you and guide you. And the only thing the Holy Spirit does, he doesn't even boast of himself. He preaches of Jesus. He preaches of the word. Making a resting place for the Lord. And see, Jesus says this. He said, foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to what? Lay his what? Lay his head. It's funny he didn't say lay his body. If you look up the word there, head, it's actually meaning to headship or authority. I'm almost done, guys. I promise. Just give me. He has nowhere to lay his authority. Nowhere to lay his power. Nowhere to lay his unction. Nowhere to lay his presence. Nowhere to lay his authority. Nowhere. And he's, you know, all the only thing God's looking for is a place to rest. That's it. He's just looking for a place to come and dwell and say, listen, I don't want to just sup with you. I want to live in you, man. I want to breathe in you. I want everything you say and do to be supernatural. The Holy Spirit. My God. Man, the Holy Spirit. Make for him an upper room. Listen to this. In Genesis 2 2, the word rest is katapuo. Katapuo. This is what katapuo means. It's the same first verbiage used. Katapuo literally means to stop, to cease from, to bring an end, or to bring to rest. When Jesus said, Foxes have holes, birds have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. The word head is kata, kata lego. Do you hear the, do you hear the similance, the, the similarity? Katapuo, kata lego, the first, they're from the first same kata. This is what kata means. Kata means to bring down from, from a higher to a lower place, to bring exactly down to complete. Foxes have holes. He wasn't saying, God, I wish you could get this. He wasn't saying, disciples, I don't know where we're going to sleep tonight. Come on, he could stay anywhere. He's Jesus. He could open a door if he wanted to. He could build a bed just by saying, bed be there. Come on, he was fully God, fully man. But he says this. He said, foxes have holes, birds have no, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his authority. There's nowhere right now. Nowhere right now for me to take my authority and to bring it to an end and to rest it on something. See, he is the head of the... My God. He is the head. If he is the head, then who are we? Oh, dear God. I wish you could get as excited as I am about this. If they, they, oh, my God. Man, we're not zombies. We don't walk around headless. Oh, my God. Oh my God, oh we have many, many members, many members, but we have a head. Oh, it says in Psalms 133.3, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the oil that ran down the head of Aaron. Anointing comes from the head. He's looking for a place to put his head. He's looking for a place to rest on your life. Now I have to ask you this. If he cannot find a place, then what is in the way of him resting on you? I can talk about everything we see. Exterior, drugs, cigarettes, alcohol. 
We can go everywhere. But how about hate? How about murder? How, how about things that all God said? God said even if you look upon a woman with lust, you committed adultery in your heart. Oh, it's a higher standard. Don't think for one second the New Testament means grace, lower standard. No, it's a higher standard. That's why we need grace. That's why we need Jesus. Because it's a higher standard we live by. He said this. He said, foxes have holes and birds have nests. But the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. Nowhere to lay his head. He's searching to and fro with his eyes. He's looking for a place. Can he lay his head on you? Are you his body? Because let me tell you what a headless body does. Nothing. I'm going to sit here in my pew and do nothing. Sit here in my seat and do nothing. I don't feel led to pray for that person because I'm hurt by them. I don't feel led to do this because, oh, and, and we want to talk so bad about the president. When's the last time you prayed for him? Because ultimately it ain't the people that put him up there. It was God. Whether you want to hear it or not. The, my scripture says that the only one that can put someone in authority is God. And the only one that can take them down is God. And I, I've got a feeling that the trump of God is getting ready to sound. Are you preaching political? No, I hate Trump. Uh, hate's a bad word. Don't use that word. I dislike him. Let's say that. I think, I, I, I think he's one of the biggest uh, uh, drawn away. He puts your vision and, and draws it away from what's really going on. I do. I do. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, I'm not for anybody. Because they're all liars. But my prayer is this. My prayer is this. God, whoever you want to put up in the authority, you put them up. Whoever you want to set up in high places, then you set them up. But I'm, but I'm going to tell you this right now. That doesn't give me a right as a Christian to stand by and watch what's going on. As a matter of fact, the reason why we don't have prayer in schools is because the Christians didn't say anything about it. The reasons why the Ten Commandments is not in schools because we didn't say anything about it. Oh my God, a, a Muslim can take their, their mat and they can roll it in front of a 7-Eleven, but we can't pray for, for somebody. I've seen them do it. They roll their mat out and they do this whole thing. But they stole it from Daniel. They took it from the book of Daniel. Daniel would pray out his window. He'd get down three times a day. He'd get down in the morning, in the noon, and in the evening. And he'd pray. He'd pray towards it. And let me tell you something right now. My God, if I could have just maybe five or ten Christians in a town to stop what they're doing and, and kneel down in the middle of the parking lot and pray three times a day. My God. My God, maybe we'd see some things change. <sighs> a headless body. I'm getting ready to close. Feel the Lord. Feel the feel the power of God. He said, he said, the Son of Man has nowhere to, to lay his head. When he's hanging on the cross, he says, it's finished, Telesi. Telesi means it's finished. It's finished. It's finished. I, I, it's completed. I've done what I was supposed to do. I've done everything, Lord, I've been obedient to you as for the joy that was set before me. I endured the cross. You were the joy that was set before the Lord to endure the cross. Yeah. Your face was on his mind when he was going to the cross. As a matter of fact, he loved you so much, he wants you to do the same thing. Oh, we want to know him in the power of his resurrection, but no one wants to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. Oh, we want the easy way out. Oh, anoint me. Oh, God, anoint me. Oh, God, send me all over the world. Anoint me, anoint me. Okay, you need to go get in a corner and bury yourself. Because unless a seed falls to the ground and dies, it remains alone. Oh, you need to get away from your friends. You need to get away even from sometimes your family. You need to go bury yourself maybe for a couple of years. Maybe you need to go bury yourself for a month. Maybe you need to go bury yourself here. Maybe you need to go bury yourself there. Why? Because this is what happens when a seed falls and dies. What happens is, is the pressure that's in the seed actually causes it to break through. The vines start coming through the seed. And it's, 
You, you have to die to yourself. It's the story of the gospel. Unless a man deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me, he can't have no part with me. You've got to get away and you've got to die to yourself. Matthew chapter 6, go into the room and when you shut the door behind you, then, uh, then, then whatever you pray in secret, my, my heavenly father will reward you openly. We're getting a lot of rewards openly. Maybe a lot of rewards from men, but maybe not God. Maybe, maybe what you got to do is go shut the door again. Go shut the door. Maybe you need to pray, God, I want to be a place for you to rest on me because now we're operating in the new covenant. Now it's the new covenant in his blood. It's in his blood. His blood. The new covenant. What is the new covenant? My God, if we could get, catch a tenth of this. It's not your job to heal nobody. It's not your job to deliver nobody. It's your job to be his hands and to go lay your hands on him and say, not by my authority, but I ain't got no authority, but my head does. I'm just, I'm just the body. The, body, the head's telling me what to do. I'm just my, because everything, the nerve here, the endings, the nerve endings in my brain, everything, it's, it's, it all comes from up here. If you separate the head, you have no function of the body. So it, my head's telling me the Lord Jesus Christ that's resting upon my life is telling me to lay hands on you. And you're going to have to get better because he's going to heal you, not me. I can't do nothing. But God is saying that addiction you've been into, I, listen, I can't do anything for you, but I can lay my hands on you. And, and, and the head that, that is anointed, he said, listen, you've been anointed. You've been anointed. What are you doing with your anointing? Ben, you've been anointed. Been anointed. What are you doing with your anointing? Are you using it? Are you using the gifts? They're free. Man, I like Christmas. Christmas is good. You get free stuff. You also spend a fortune. Come on, man. When you're in a family of, what, 30? Come on. You name, draw names, you know. Draw names. Buy for 30 people. You're going to be out $2,500. Well, we can get them all $1 gifts. All right, we'll go to the Dollar Tree. $30 out the door. Well, I was thinking of you, you know. I don't know. He's giving you the best gift, the Holy Spirit. He's giving you the greatest gift, the Holy Spirit. Now, where is he resting? And if he isn't resting on you, maybe he comes upon you. Oh, I love the goosebumps, so he comes upon me. But you know the difference when he's come upon you and when he's rested, when you get into an argument with someone and you have a decision to make. You can either listen to the Holy Spirit or you can just lash out. Or how about with you, when you're with your group of, group of friends that you shouldn't be hanging out with and you have a decision to do this, the thing that you shouldn't do? You listen to the Holy Spirit. He's a comforter. Everything that you need. He's your he the healer. He does the work of the Lord. He doesn't even preach, prophesy of himself. He preaches of the Lord. Where is the Lord resting in your heart? Where is he resting in your life? Is he at the highest point in your life? Or do you just, you know, maybe he's, is he on the second level? Maybe he's in the basement? Maybe he's on the first floor. I don't know. Can everyone else see him? Can everyone else see the word of the Lord in your life? Have you grown? Have you grown? Or have you digressed? Have you grown? Or have you digressed? I love the stories of old ministers. They'll say, man, I remember when I used to fall, when I, when I fell in love with the Lord for the first time. I remember the, this and I remember that. And, and a, whole, uh, a minister rebuked me one time. And I said that. I said, man, I remember when I first got saved. He said, what happened? I got more mature. No, you didn't. Well, you know, I got more used wisdom. That's a lie. Well, you know, I'm using wisdom now because I don't raise my hands as much as I do now. I don't dance as much as I do now. You know, it's just wisdom. Just, you know, I mean, I'm more mature now. You believe the lie. It's a lie. No, 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 no. Now, we were meant to fall in love with the Lord every day. Right. Leaf, your leaf should not wither. If your leaf is withering, you're probably not connected to the stream. If you're not connected to the stream, then your tree's going to fall over. Your tree's going to die. Listen, even a cactus in the middle of the desert can live. 
That's what I'm surrounded by. It's who I'm surrounded by. Well, cut off your surroundings. Why are you making excuses? Cut off your surroundings. You want to grow or do you want to just sit where you are? You have a choice. It's not God. It's not God's fault. It's not God's fault I'm not progressing. It's my fault. He's standing, all arms open wide. Come on, come to me. I want you to do want more wonders, more signs. Oh, wow. wow but your marriage life's going to be better. Uh, he's got all these things for you. It's all found in him. It's all found in him. There's no excuses. It's the Holy Spirit. He's freely given. Oh, God, please give me the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy, Spirit. Holy, 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 Holy Spirit. Please come upon me. Holy. No, man, it's freely given. It's not a mystical thing. My God, you want the Holy Spirit? You can ask for it in your car. Right. My God, while you're driving, Holy Spirit, come fill my car. Okay, he'll come fill your car. Yes. You want tongues? You don't have even anybody lay hands on you. Right. My God, you can, lay, you can be in, in your dorm room. You can be wherever. I don't know where you're going to be at. You could be in your home. Holy Spirit, fill me up. Man, he'll, he's faithful. He's not going to give you an evil spirit. He's not a bad father. He's a good father. He's a good father, and he's, he's, I'll tell you what he's doing right now. He's looking for a bride for his son. He's looking right now. He's saying, hey, listen, I, I, the body, man, the body needs to step up its game. Man, we got to put the head back where he belongs. Jesus is at the center. He's at the top. He's, only, he's the only way we see. He's the only way we hear. He's the head. And he sends us the Holy Spirit. Why? Because we can't do it on our own. My goodness. Wow, try to strive on this life on your own. Have a good time. Let me know how that works for you. Good job. If you want to pat on your shoulder, good job. Man, you can't. I can't do it without the Holy Spirit. You're nothing without the Holy Spirit. It's only Him that quickens us, that moves us. In Him we live and move and have our being. It's the Holy Spirit. But I want to ask you, is He resting on you? I wish I, I wish I had that thing here. I, I would do it. I wish I had a glass. I do. Whoever's water this is, I'm sorry. I'm taking it. Some of the other young people may have seen me do this before, but I'm going to do it here. I may miss the carpet up. Oh, by the way, the Holy Spirit doesn't always look pretty. Yeah, they used to take a horn of oil. See, pastors, just, we just dump, we just try to moderately dump you with oil. No, no, they took a horn. See this thing? See, they'd fill this joker up with oil. And when you was anointed, everyone knew you were. Yeah. Everyone knew, everyone knew you was anointed. The people from the next town over could smell it. See, I see. See, we're worried about getting our clothes messed up and our, our eyelashes messed up and our hair messed up. Uh -huh. Holy Spirit comes upon you. You really don't, you want to, what, you want to be conservative? You want to be, how's that working out? <laughs> well, you don't want to dance? How's that working out? You don't want to praise? How's that working out? Uh -huh. Praise is a very intimate thing. Therefore, if you can't praise, you have no intimacy. Uh -huh. So, so they took a horn of oil and what they did was they filled this joker up with oil and plugged it. And what they would do is if he was anointed, they'd take, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't do this. They wouldn't do like a little dad here. God bless you. You're anointed. They wouldn't do that. They'd dump it. It's funny because when oil is dumped on your clothes, your clothes are ruined. Yeah. See, your, your outer garments, your garments that you used to walk in, you can't wear no more. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why when John was preaching this morning, he said, he said the man came in. And he didn't have the right clothes on. Yeah. You know why he didn't have the right clothes on? See, the clothes was provided. If you look it up, the clothes was provided at the door. Like, he had to take off his old clothes to put those on. He was more comfortable with what he was wearing than what the king wanted to give him. It's more comfortable with, with the king. <laughs> more comfortable. More comfortable with your society, the way that you do things, the way that you, the way you've always done it. You, some of that needs to get broken off. Well, it's not how my family did it. I don't care how your family did it. How is the Lord telling you to do it? Follow Him. Well, we hold the grudge against Him. No, 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 no. That's not how. That's not how we do it. It's not how God does it. You see, when you're dumped and you're anointed with oil, everyone else can smell it. 
All right, get proof. Give me scriptural proof. Everybody else can smell it. Okay, so Mary, there's a woman by the name of Mary. She comes in the back door of a Pharisee's house. Don't know why she had the access to the back door of the Pharisee's house. That's kind of weird. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, everyone knew that this woman, uh, I'm not going to go there. This, everyone knew this woman and what she did. Yeah, and, and but what she had was she had a, she had a, a, a alabaster box of oil. So what she did was is she came and she broke it. An alabaster box of oil was a year's worth of wages. As what it equi- so it was about eighteen to twenty six thousand so dollars. Is what she just dumped upon Jesus, and it said the aroma filled the room. That's right. So when you're anointed, people listen. Don't think you're anointed and nobody else can smell it. Amen. I want to get on the platform. Okay, when the worship leader smells it on you, then you can get up there. I want to preach. Okay, when you go bury yourself and die to yourself, and, and then when the pastor looks out and the Lord said he's anointed right now, then maybe he'll ask you to preach. But don't try to get up there and self-inflicted preach yourself. Listen, you don't make room for your gift. Your gift makes room for you, okay? All right? Well, I got to ask, I don't ask all these churches to go play and sing. Their, no, no, no. You just need to go die to yourself. And when the Lord sees that it's fit for you to get up and, and anoint you, then he'll do so. He said, but, but, but listen, don't, don't trust. Don't trust. It, 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 oh, dear God. I'm getting off on a tangent here. I shouldn't. But listen, it, don't, don't, it, if you're in the flock, if, if we're all in the flock together and the pastor's in the flock and I'm in the flock and we're all in this flock together, don't trust anybody that don't smell like sheep. You gotta break their leg now. <laughs> no, but they did do that. And they did. They broke the sheep the, with the one lamb that was leading people away. I'm getting off track for a second, but it's, it's good. They, they broke the lamb's leg that was leading all the other sheep away. So it couldn't lead them away anymore. See, God's more concerned with what he's trying to do. So he's willing to break someone else's leg so that other people don't follow that person. So this is what happens, though, because everyone sees it as a bad thing. Uh, when the lamb's leg gets broken, <laughs> the shepherd has to carry the lamb. So really, the lamb's leg that was broken is usually the closest to the heart of Jesus. Think about it. And, and usually, I love it because God, God won't resist a broken and a contrite heart. He won't resist it. And as a matter of fact, I, I love this. It says... It says, resist the devil and he will flee. That's not the whole part of the scripture. It says, submit to God. Draw nigh to him and submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. But if you look at a couple verses before that, it talks about, I I have to show this to you really quick and I'll I'll close. Let me show it to you really quick quick and I'll close. Uh, um, Here, right here. Resist. I just preached it the other night. James chapter 4, 17. James, just real quick. James 4, 17. Okay, yeah, just go up there. And we'll, we'll look at it up there. Um, uh, James 4, 17. It says, therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth not, to him... Is that... Is that right? Maybe that's not. Yeah, it's 4, 17. Okay, next verse. Uh, let's stop there real quick. Um, uh I don't sin, or I haven't been sinning as much as I uh, have been in the future. Well, that verse actually says, if you know to do good and you don't, it's sin. Yeah. Well, I don't smoke or drink, cuss. Chew. If you knew to do good and you didn't, you just sinned. Yeah. That's what the Bible says. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth not. It's, I'm trying to find it really quick. I'm closing. I promise everybody's hungry. They're starving. <laughs> verse 18. Go to verse 18 there. Um, The background. Background's nice. Background's nice. Get lost in it. Star Wars was a bummer. Okay. Go down to Rich and we... Uh, maybe this is it. Maybe it's James 4. Here it is. Okay. Um, uh, just uh, James 4. Okay, uh, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from the desires and pleasures that war in your members, not from the devil? Okay. Uh, you lust and do not have. Again, that's not the devil. That's your lust. 
You lust and do, you murder and cover it and you cannot obtain. Again, that's not the enemy. That's you lusting and coveting and you can't obtain. <clears throat> you fight in war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. You ask, uh, you ask and do not receive because you ask admit. I don't know, Lord, maybe you'll help me out today. Maybe you'll do that. No, you ask, uh, you, you're like a double-minded man tossed to and fro. It says this, adulterers, this is what he calls them, adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is the enmity, uh, enmity with God, which means enemy of God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Are you making yourself friend with the world? You're an enemy of God. It's just that simple. Or do you think that the scripture says in vain, the spirit who gels, uh, dwells in us yell, uh, yearns earnestly. Listen to this. But he gives more grace that he said God resists the proud and gives grace to the humble. Yeah. Okay. A broken and a contrite heart. This is another thing with grace. If you're not broken, you don't have grace. You have pride in your heart. And the worst pride I've ever seen is spiritual pride. I've seen a lot of major crazy pride. But the worst pride I've seen is the pride that we're better than you. And I'm at a higher level in God than you are. Spiritual pride. And you know what God does to that? He resists it. You want to get in your word? You want to talk all mystical with people and think that you know more? Than, come on, man. Cut that out. Man, cut it out. I'm serious. Let that be a rebuke to anybody. It's a rebuke to myself. Let it be a rebuke to anybody who wants for it to be a rebuke. Cut it out. Man, talk to person one. Jesus is not going to come. If Jesus was here right now, he would not say, Thou wast in theist. Man, I was in the 15th hundred heaven and I saw all these thousands of cherubims and this and that. No, he would, you know what he'd say to you? I know you're hurting. I want to help you. Yeah. It's not mystical. Yes, he's an almighty God and we don't treat him lightly. I, I'm not saying that, but it's not something out of reach, man. It's not something out of reach. Talk to him like you talk to your brother, sister, mother, father. Talk to him. God, I need. Hey, you know what? Sometimes my, for, for a good while, my prayer was, God, I don't know what to do. That was my prayer. What do I do? Some of y'all's prayer, you see, you may have a, a cave prayer right now. God, I'm running. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm running. Well, we'll say it. Don't act like everything's hunky dory. And get up to the altar, man. Don't come because someone tells you to come. This is a place. Listen, the altar is not a place for you to come and lay something down. It's a place for you to come and die. That's right. I'm closing with this here. Hopefully. I know I preached your ear off, but I'm closing with this. How do you know if something is resting upon you? And how do you know if something is, how do you know if you're full or not of the Lord? I wish I would have had a bigger picture. But I don't. I should have got one. I don't know if anybody can see this cup right here. It's not really clear. Do we have a clear glass anywhere? It's clear. Okay. Right now, the water. No, right here. Yeah, it's got one third right here. Okay. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to pour Holy Spirit. This is Holy Spirit. This is you. You're the vessel. People tell me all the time, I'm full. I'm so full. We'll see. I'm full of something. <laughs> full of yourself. No. I'm going to pour this water in. Where am I at now? About four-fifths. All right. Tell me when I'm full. Give me a... Uh, Give me another bottle, because I'm not fooling you. Where's another bottle at? Throw it. Basketball. All right. Play something soft, AJ. Just soft. All right. Now, there's a film on the top of the water. If you guys have seen science fair projects, you can take a needle and the needle will float on it because there's a film on top. Is that correct? And then the moment you put, uh, I think, is it salt or something? Soap. soap. The moment you put soap on it, it drops, correct? Okay. How many think I can get more water on that without it overflowing? Think so? All right. The 
water, I know you can't see from where you're at, but the water is actually over the cup now. And there was a minister. I didn't come up with this. I wish I would have. It would have been really brilliant. There was a minister, and he was driving his car. His name's Damon Thompson. Uh, and he said, uh, he was praying, and he has a little exercise he does. He drives for about two hours, and he prays in the Spirit. And that's it for two hours. So he'll go on road trips. He won't allow anybody to talk to him. Most of the time he'll drive by himself and he does an exercise and he prays in the spirit for two hours straight. And then he'll stop and get gas and he'll see if anybody notices. It's a little exercise. Bill Johnson, uh, pastor of Bethel Church in Reading, says this. says, before he goes into a grocery store, he stands outside of the door of the grocery store and he turns his affection toward the Lord. And he waits until he feels the Holy Spirit rest on him. And then he goes into the store and sees if there's a difference. He's done this many times with banks. He'll wait outside the bank and he'll just, he won't say a word. He'll just turn his affection. See, you don't have to say anything. Really, as a matter of fact, some of us need to shut our mouth and let our heart do the talking. Because our mouth and our heart ain't saying the same thing. God, I love you. And your heart's saying, I wish I was eating. I can't, oh God, better is one day in your court. Is that what your heart's really saying? A music minister said this. He said, I would rather my worship. What? How say it, honey. I would rather my heart be without words than my words be without heart. Get in a prayer circle. Just because someone's not praying out loud doesn't mean their affections aren't turned towards him. So Bill Johnson walked, and before he walked into this bank, he turned his affections toward the Lord. He just stood there. He tells a story. He walks in this bank, and he gets in line to pay for, or not to pay for anything, but to put money in the bank. And the two people behind them started laughing uncontrollably, speaking in tongues. Why? Because you will never be dangerous to the enemy with what the Lord's put in you. You'll never be dangerous until I know I'm full. Oh, I'm full of the Holy Ghost. I'm full. Okay. David put it best. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Fear no evil. I can now I'm still put water in this thing. I'm done. Look, I'm going to drop, I'll still drop, I'll drop water in this thing. This minister was driving down the road and he said this. The Lord spoke to him while he was praying. He said, is that cup full? God, it's pretty full, he said. Dump water in it. He took water and dumped it in. It was all the way at the top while he's driving. It's all the way at the top like that. Now, if I picked that up, it would fall. It would eye everywhere. The Lord said, if you took a little eye drop little eye, eye deal, you know, the little thing you squeeze. He said, if you dipped it in some water, and do you think you could add another drop? He said, probably, Lord. I just added more water to it. Now, how do I know, and how do you know if the Holy Spirit is really in you? And not just in you. How do you know if you're full? You know you're full when whatever's in you gets on you. You see, a lot of people are satisfied. I got the Holy Spirit in me, but no one else can recognize it because it ain't on you. The Holy Spirit came down and descended upon Jesus like a dove and rested and remained on him. My question is, where is the Holy Spirit at on you? Stand to your feet all over this place. I'm done. Every eye closed in this place. It may not be the prettiest thing. I promise you it won't.
I don't have to say a word to you. I don't have to try to compel you to come down here. The Holy Spirit's already spoke to you in the middle of the service. I'm not going to do his job. This is his work. If you feel a tug on your heart and anything I've said throughout this word, you know without a shadow of a doubt you're supposed to be at this altar. Then get up here as fast as you can and surrender your life. Get up here as fast as you can. Don't got to wait for nobody to pray for you. Just begin to call out upon the name of Jesus. Begin to call out upon the Lord. Come on, you know there's more. You know there's more. You know oh, you've tried to keep it contained. And the Holy Spirit is saying, I don't want to be contained. I want your mom to know, your dad to know. I want your brothers and sisters to know the love. I want them to know it. Don't keep this contained any longer. Man, stop trying to contain it. Would you just let him flow out? Would you let him flow out? Would you let him flow out? Would you let him overflow you today? Would you let him overflow you? Koria baba shindro lobo sete maka. He tere de boshanda de rama. Mandere de rama. The music. Go ahead. Whatever you guys feel led to do, I'm gonna pray. I don't care if there's one area, if there's one area in your life, my God, you've got to make him Lord over then. You make him Lord over that one area in your life. Whatever it is in your heart, whatever it is, don't be ashamed, man. We're not, we're here for Jesus. We ain't here for somebody. We're here for Jesus. We're here to get touched by Jesus. We're here to love on Jesus. We're here to look at Jesus. We're here to hear Jesus. Just begin to call out upon him. I'm not going to lay hands on you yet. If you want the gift of tongues, you want to come up here and ask for it. God, give me the gift. Lord, give me the free gift. Speak it in the Holy Ghost. If you got to lay something down, then come lay it down. Come lay yourself down upon the altar. Come lay your life down upon the altar. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Korama, lift up, lift up the volume of the music. Korama, your presence, Lord. Hallelujah. She tated Begin to press in right now. I don't care what's had you bound, it's gotta let go. It's gotta let go. Korea Baba Shi Toloboko. Send it in a motion. Send your Holy Ghost. Send your Holy Ghost, Jesus. My shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Lift your voice if you know it. Sing it. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. And Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Lord, put a fresh fire. Your blood is 